Good morning to my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's Monday morning, Easter Monday for the Roman Catholics and the Protestants and I've just come down here to Zedith Beach to be greeted by this most magnificent sunrise. I was sitting at home watching the golf, the masters, and looked at my watch and it was six o'clock. And then I got online to Google and I said, what time sunrise this morning? And it said 6.09 and I said, bugger it. I just jumped in the car, got dressed, jumped in the car and came down here to witness this beautiful once in a day event and at the end of the day we don't really know how many sunrises we get to experience in our lifetime so uh, grabbing one more experiencing one more is something which is uh, most appreciated and it's a gift from God as my mother always always used to say God waits for nobody when it comes to the sunrise you've got to get up get out of the house get down to a location and to enjoy it to experience it and to respect it because as we said it comes once and it's here for just a moment We've got a lady there going into the surf and we've got a number of other people here as well celebrating the beginning of another glorious day the surf is pumping and the sun is shining like it normally does anyway today i'm going to continue like i normally do on jim's 5am club and go through a book summary and today's book summary is entitled Life in Half a Second by an author named Michael Michael, Le Michael Lewitch so the author talks about I guess the beauty of life and how we should not ever take it for granted and to make every opportunity that we can to uh, enjoy creation and he basically says that uh, planet earth is uh, or life on earth is 4.5 million years old and the homo sapiens have been on this planet for approximately 200,000 years according to his research and in relative terms if earth was just one year old mankind would be 23 minutes of that one year and each and every one of us would be all but half a second so what we're saying here is that in God's time, which is infinite, uh, humans have only been here for an absolute fraction of a moment. And you and I, regardless of whether or not we live to 100 years or if we live for just 20 years or 26 years, regardless of how long we are here, in relative terms, it is quite insignificant when it's um, compared to uh, infinity and the history of time and how long time has been in abundance. When you're young, when we're young, time seems unlimited, but we waste it doing things that uh, are, are wasteful, are useless, are useless, 
and not doing the things that we really want to do. As we say, you know, we've got an allotment of time and that time could be three score and ten, it could be 30 years or whatever it is, as I mentioned before. But you have the ability within your lifetime, within your lifetime, to do all the things that you want to do. And I remember hearing many years ago that you can't achieve everything in, you know, at once. But if you break it out and if you plan it and if it's God's will and you step it out, you can achieve quite a lot of things within a lifetime. As Anthony Robbins once said years ago, people grossly overestimate what they can achieve in a year, but underestimate manifold, manifold uh, what they can achieve in a decade, let alone a lifetime. So we all have a gift. We all have a gift of a lifetime. We don't know how long that lifetime is. Just yesterday, as an example, over there at Fingal, at the Fingal um, um, Spit, a 70-year-old gentleman uh, lost his life at the uh, crossing there. So I don't know the exact story, but what I probably assume, based on what I've heard, is that there was a younger person crossing the spit or close to the spit there. They got taken into the water and swept, swept away. And he jumped in to help the young girl. Uh, the young girl swam to safety or somehow uh, was, um, was, was saved. But he unfortunately lost his life just yesterday. So it just goes to show that we don't really know how long we are on this planet for and uh, you're just standing here minding your own business and there's a couple of dolphins out there as well just minding your own business and something may happen which will change your life uh, you may need to jump in the water to save somebody but uh, that jumping in the water to save somebody else may cost you your own life but it is a noble cause you know, we are here to help each other where possible. And uh, I don't know where that dolphin's gone. Oh, there, there they are. They're still out there. How beautiful is it to have a sunrise, have people swimming, and dolphins uh, swimming around as well on this magnificent morning. Anyway, a bit more about this book, just to uh, keep us focused and to see what we can learn, what we can glean from this author. So as the author says, time seems unlimited, but time for each and every one of us from a physical perspective is finite. We get a lifetime and our souls live forever, live you know, uh, infinitely, and one day hopefully we will wait for that magnificent day where we have the second coming and our souls will reunite with our spiritual body and become one um, but between now and then we've got a lot of thinking and a lot of living to do and a lot of decisions to make so the author here recommends that we have a bucket list because the tragedy of our life is waiting and deferring um, and the reality is, is that we don't have time to waste for each and every one of us. No, it's much later than what we think it is in our lives, especially when you're my age. You know, I'm turning 63 in a, a month or so, um, and that is getting on in age. My dear mother um, died, sadly died when she was 63 because she was ill, she had cancer and um, let me just see these dolphins out here, sorry she had cancer, she came up here to Nelson Bay, spent a few days up here 
and uh, had a cough and then before she knew it uh, she went to the doctor and the doctor basically broke her the news that she had an unidentified cancer an unknown primary which had metastasized and six months later sadly uh, for all of us uh, we lost her and she passed away but um, no, she loved she lived a wonderful life uh, she worked she um, had a family she was married she had brothers and sisters and migrated to this wonderful country to start her new life and uh, laid a foundation for not only me but also for my children and other people I've got a uh, what do you call it a drone above my head which uh, just scared me so sorry about that so uh, we can't afford to uh, drift through life is one of the key messages from this author people don't fail in life because they aim too high or too low but people fail in life because they don't aim at anything and they just drift through life as dabblers so the key call to action from this author is to encourage us all to set goals at, which create the phenomenon uh, of activating the reticular activating system which allows us to filter and focus and concentrate on what is important to us because we are all called to live our life each of us have our own calling each of us are going to live a different life from each other we're going to have a different past a different present and a different future and we're also going to have a different fate just because my parents just because my uncles my, and aunts my, my school friends um, other people in this country weren't able to achieve certain things doesn't mean that I'm not um, blessed to achieve those particular things so we all need to continue to try to have goals to have noble goals to do things that are, are God pleasing um, and to try and live our calling and callings um, so that we can achieve something brilliant something beautiful in our days so the author then talks about the importance of being able to visualize to focus so that we can prime our bodies our minds our, at the subconscious level as well as the conscious level um, so that we can try and achieve try to manifest try to bring into being those things that we think about those things that we desire and to uh, try and activate those things and it's important to have clarity it's important to have desire it's important to have belief knowledge and action and we need to align our goals, actions and values so that we live a congruent life. We live a life that is, uh, that is aligned, uh, that is uh, purposeful. We live with, with, uh, you know, with a productive mindset and a positive uh, outcome um, mindset as well because we need to align ourselves because desire as the author says is the fuel that we need without desire we're not going to achieve anything without desire we're just going to drift we're just going to be taken by the current to wherever the current wants to take us which may not necessarily be where we want to go so the author says that we need to try and guide ourselves in a way that's going to propel us to give us momentum and to take us 
where we 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 want to go as long as we want those places that we want to go are the right places i remember the other day hearing from a spiritual leader that i that i follow and he says that you need to really look for signs as well in your life because just because you want it may not necessarily mean that is it's the right thing for you um okay, you've got to really um, ask yourself is this uh, leading me to my calling is this god pleasing is this what god's is, is this what god wants of me at this point in time because you may want it you may fight hard to get it but it may lead to your destruction so we need to be mindful that not all the things that we desire are the right things for our soul for our spirit and for our lives and we need to be open we need to be honest with ourselves and to make sure that the things that we chase are the things that are basically important to us um, for the right reasons. The author here encourages us to have a dreams list. And when you're young, um, to write down all the things that you dream of achieving. Because, and it's important to do this when you're young, as the author says, you need to be young and unconditioned you need to be young and free of free of heart free of mind free of body free of spirit to write down all the things all the possible things that you would love to do in your lifetime and to look forward to your tomorrows because uh, we get older and we get older much quicker than what we think we do now you blink your eyes, you look in the mirror and you go, who is that old man there or who's that old woman looking, looking back at me? But we have to remember that our soul, our spirit is always young. It never gets old. It's only our physicality that is uh, time bound. So we don't have you know, unlimited tomorrows as we said and uh, we need to get on with it i guess is the key message from this author and not to wait and to uh, put all of our dreams into a dream box and sometimes one of the things that we desire is peace and a simple routine and to uh, appreciate the fact that we don't need to be doing things all the time to be living a great life. Just being down by the beach here, in the presence of this sunrise, in the presence of this wonderful crashing surf, the presence of this uh, beautiful breeze by the beach is sometimes enough to bring us fulfillment, to bring, bring us enjoyment and contentment so um, the author here also says that we need to appreciate that things in our life are going to change and to welcome and to embrace change and not to try and hold on to things um, and insist that they are unchanging now, I am changing day by day. My wife, Paula, is changing day by day. My daughters are changing day by day. My grandchildren are changing day by day. Whilst it would be great to be able to hit a pause button and to stop everything right here and now, what we do is we rob ourselves of our changing tomorrows, of uh, God's plan for us. Because uh, we need, I guess, to appreciate also that, you know, things can only get better. Now, when it comes to a Christian life, um, we need to live the, with the belief that things can only get better from where we are today. Yes, we're going to have some ups and downs. 
yes, we're going to have some challenges, but the goal, the aim is for a brighter future and a better tomorrow. So uh, we need to appreciate the fact that things change and we need to have our beliefs, our beliefs and faith. Because the author says here that what is very, very real in the world is the placebo effect as well as the nocebo effect as well. If you believe in things, if you strong, strongly believe, then if you believe, then things will happen. If you believe, you will see. Um, whereas if you don't believe, then things won't happen. So the call to action from this author here is to be optimistic, to live with positive and productive, productive um, belief systems, um, to, to continue to live and act your beliefs and your dreams out, because we do have the placebo effect. Um, if you're positive, then positive things will come into your life. If you're negative, then you're going to attract negative things in your life. And this is all based on the, the laws of attraction. And as we said before, as we alluded to before, there is a thing called the reticular activating system, which sits in our brain, which is our filter. And if you're looking for good things, if you're looking for positive things, you'll see those positive things just like we saw those beautiful dolphins before just saw so how we appreciated this wonderful sunrise but if you're looking for negativity if you're looking for problems then life will give you those problems in spades there's no doubt about it so your belief is actually more important than your capabilities according to this author and the author uses the example of Roger Bannister, how he set himself a benchmark to beat the four minute mile, and he was able to do it. Um, uh, there are other examples that, you know, when you chain an elephant from when it's a, a young calf, uh, you will be able to um, break its spirit and it won't be able to move off. Uh, whatever you put something around its foot because it will think that it's chained and not be able to move anyway the last point the author talks about is the importance of environment and environment is key to our growth and development and I remember years ago going to a Jim Rohn seminar where Jim says that you know, if you're spending time with other people eventually you will become the mean average of those half dozen people that you spend the most time with. Uh, you'll start to talk like them, you'll start to dress like them, you'll start to behave like them, and you'll start to get um, things coming into your life just like they do. And if those things are negative, then you've got yourself to blame. If those things are positive, then you've got yourself to pat yourself on the back with. But to realize that we are heavily influenced by other people, so we need to be discerning with who we are influenced by. And the, I guess the big call to action, the big warning, is that we live in a world today where we have social media and we have a huge number of influences some are learned in their beliefs and their messages, others are featherweight and destructive in what they are saying. People who uh, push forward and, uh, and share um, conspiracy theories and make us distrustful of the government, distrustful of our fellow man. Now we need to live life with positive expectancy we need to live life um, with love in our hearts, not fearing evil everywhere we go, but spreading via the ripple effect, love and positivity where possible. So we need to control our choices 
and um, and not to fear our tomorrows but to boldly act to boldly move forward um, and to live as we said before with positive expectancy um, accepting the negativity accepting the problems but working through those problems one by one to bring solutions to any of those challenges that we face and the last point that the author talks about is the importance of living just outside your comfort zone uh, where the wow factor is where we learn where we grow where we develop and not to spend a lifetime just trying to be comfortable but to push yourself as often as you can ever so slightly to expand your comfort zone to live uncomfortably comfortably so to be comfortable with being in discomfort so we need to unlearn our fears change our associations reframe things and rewire ourselves by being action oriented here we go we've got some more dolphins down there as well so we've got a big dolphin parade today it's just magnificent there they are just behind behind that wave there let's see if they come up there they are so it's just beautiful i never get sick i never get sick of seeing dolphins it's just something there's a huge pod there there's about six or seven of them and sometimes we get to see whales around here as well um, in the winter months so over the next few months we'll be seeing the whales just parading past here uh, just glorious anyway i'll finish up now so thank you very much for joining me on this episode of jim's 5am club from this magical location up here at zenith beach just be below mount tomari and i'll take a walk up there later on when i get a chance but uh, thank you once again for joining me on this most magnificent morning in this glorious location in this wonderful country celebrating god's creation and as i say australia has always been and will always be god's country always has been always will be and there isn't a person who has ever walked this country walked this continent who wasn't either born here or came from somewhere else so we need to appreciate that that this country is everybody's country and uh, we need to be open open and not to think that any particular culture any particular person has uh, primary ownership of uh, this country it is everybody's land because it's god's land god came before everything and everyone and it's up to each and every one of us to maximize our time and our opportunities through our work, through our personal exertion, and through our collaboration and cooperation with each other. Anyway, take care everybody, yasas, and bye for now.